Okay, you've completed chapter zero. You didn't fully get it because we don't and it takes a lot of time, but we're gonna come back and it'll make more sense. Let's take a trip back with our ancestors and our own selves with our own naked eyes. In chapter one, we just look up. Now remember, that in chapter one, we learned about galaxies. We learned that our universe has about 100 billion galaxies, that's a lot. Each galaxy has about 100 billion stars, that's an easy thing to remember. Some are small with maybe 1 billion, 10 billion, a tenth of a billion, real small. Of course, they won't glow as much. They're harder to see. They don't give us off as much light. We learned that uh, a big one's like 100 billion or so. Milky Way is good size, 100 billion, 300 billion stars, stars with maybe stuff around them and planets and life and who knows, you know, fruits. Um, and then huge galaxies with maybe a thousand billion, called a trillion. This is the Hubble, not from the Hubble telescope. This is the real deal, right? The Hubble Atlas of Galaxies. This was published in 1962, and you see various shapes. Remember, you learned that there were like four primary shapes for galaxies. And you can see the galaxies. And I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm gonna ask you to put this away. You don't know this, you don't get the look, this is cheating. You're an ancient shepherd. How about this? Oh, no, 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 no. This is about 400 years ago, developed, and then improved, and improved, and improved. We'll get to this in chapter three, but again, this is cheating. Notice that this is a lot bigger than my, the opening of my eyeball, my pupil, so I can capture more light. Oh, no, no, we don't know anything about that. We don't know, let's put that aside. Um, we know nothing about that. What can we see? What can we see with our naked eye? Let's take a let's take a tour over here real quick, and I think I'll just stand over here. Oh, where'd that telescope come from? That's cheating. All right, what can we see with our naked eye? Looking up, and I know we often don't look up because we have different lives. It's not as important to us now but it was important back in the day to give us some dependability, some predictability in our lives. So we look up and we wonder about, oh, wait, telescope, no, no telescopes. Naked eye, also called unaided eye. We look up, we see things, right? what do we see? Of course we see moon, we might see it during the day. Hey, do you see that over there? This picture was taken, we'll see some pictures from one of my students. You see that? Do you see that right there? See this guy? It's a comet. It's a comet. A streaker, I, I call it. We'll talk about those guys. So, what can we see with our with our naked eye? In my little low tick production here. We see a UFO. You see that? UFO, yay. No, not really. We'll talk about that. Um, that looks like the sun over there, but it's just a reflection of the light. We see little dots here. What are those dots? I know, they're stars, but what are they? And so we're gonna take a look here. We're gonna take a, take a look at some stars. We'll try and deal with that reflection. Let's make a list. Let's make a list. And you can pause, don't look. What can you see with your naked eye? What astronomical things, what categories of things or things can you see with your naked eye? That's chapter one. We're going to try to summarize, or we are going to summarize some, some things of what our ancestors saw with their naked eye. No telescopes, just a really cool outfit and an ability to do this. So we're gonna see what our ancestors could see.
to the naked eye. Who knows, maybe our ancestors were aliens. That's kind of make-believe, right? Unless you've got the evidence, you can make up all kinds of stories. Maybe there are. They, could there be aliens? Absolutely there could be. Are there a lot of chances? Yeah, you see how many galaxies and each galaxy stars and around the stars, planets, there are a lot of chances for it. But we don't know yet. But we, we do know, and what our ancestors and all our ancestors could know, they didn't even know there was a galaxy, there weren't galaxies. We didn't know till about 100 years ago that there were galaxies, right? But we do know this. We do know this. That we can see, sure, I've got that in there, five astro things that we're going to study. We're going to take a look at stars. What can you, with your naked eye, if you were on a desert island and bored and whatever, or, you know, you look up and you go, wow, maybe you want a better job than being an ancient shepherd, say, hey, I'll, I'll check out these, those stars and I'll look for patterns. What are they to you? They are dots of light. That's all you know. You don't know what they are. You don't know what they are. So we're going back, right? We call them the fixed stars because they stay in patterns and they move together, but they're always those patterns. But it's interesting that some uh, months you'll see a certain pattern and then, then next year in that month, you'll see that pattern up at night again. So different months, you see different patterns at night, different seasons, you see different patterns, and, but they're the fixed stars. They're always together in groups. We'll talk about that. You see streaks, like I showed you the comet. But occasionally there's a shooting little dot of light, a shooting star, which is really an incorrect name. It's not a star. Now we know what a star is more, but you don't know because you're an ancient shepherd, right? We're an ancient shepherd right now. Stars. Streakers. Various types of streakers. We'll get into streaks. Oh my gosh. There's a streak, is it bad luck? There's a comet, is it bad luck? You could understand how people might think that. I mean, stuff happens throughout your life and you wonder, what, why did that happen? Why, why does it always happen to me, right? I'll give you a little hint though, you know, what you want is very particular and it just won't happen naturally. Occasionally you get what you want, but you know, you gotta make it happen. You gotta make things happen. If I want to move something from, I want to pick this pen up, I got to reach it, pick it up, right? If it's slippery, it slips out. But that was a way of thinking, a very human way of thinking, a very understandable way, not making fun, right? Is it bad luck? Do the patterns affect our lives? Planets, they knew about planets. I mean, around the globe. We're talking about not just, not just the Greeks or anything like that. And the Greeks, of course, were very connected with North Africa and all of Europe and Middle East and everybody was, you know, right around this time too, right? So this is Leonardo da Vinci, right? The Renaissance period. A lot of people don't know that da Vinci played the electric guitar. Oh, wait a minute. Electric stuff was figured out like in the 1800s and then, no. So that doesn't quite fit. But the Renaissance, 1500s, 1600s, we're gonna go way back. I mean, that's a ways back, but it's like 400 years or whatever. We can go back thousands of years here. And for thousands of years, go four, 6,000 years, look at Babylon, etc. People were keeping track of stuff. And they were wondering. We were observing and wondering with our naked eyes. What the heck was that? We see these dots and they move with the fixed stars, except tomorrow night. It's a little hard to tell night to night, but maybe week to week, certainly week to week, month to month. You really say, hey, that dot keeps moving next to different stars. They're wandering dots. What are they? They must have special powers. Let's see what we know about those. Are they gods? It's a reasonable thought, right? It's a reasonable thought when you don't know, when you haven't left the planet, when you don't have cell phones, right? Of course, with cell phones and stuff, you get all kinds of wacky ideas too. So you gotta, gotta check it, look for the evidence. But we're gonna talk about well, planets, their connection with weeks, weekdays. The sun, why is, why is it called the sun? 
the sun. Well, sun is the name of that thing. It's really bright, right? You want to look at it directly. It's also named in Greek Helios or Egypt Ra, the Incans Inti, Sonan, in European countries, Sonan, sun. Is it a god? People around the globe without talking to each other, without the internet, without cell phone, without even the ability to travel, right? A lot of them tend to think that. They knew it was important, right? It's important. What is it? it? Notice that it's the only one that looks like that. So it is the sun, but that's like saying the Jupiter now, right? The sun is really its name, but it's the only one. Oh, wait a minute. Or is it? What is sun? You know, it's a star. But someone was burned at the stake for suggesting that and not letting that go. You'll meet him later, Giordano Bruno. So we call it the sun, but it's really not, that's just his name. It's not the Jupiter, right? We also call it the moon. Why? Because for a long time, that was the only one. There weren't other moons. You couldn't know until you get that telescope into the game. And then you start getting technology and you're learning more. And if you have integrity and honesty, you're not trying to make money off of people and manipulate people, you'll go, oh, I was wrong. It's not the only one. Moon has other names too, Luna. So I like to call it moon and I like to call sun, sun, instead of the sun. Occasionally I slip into the moon and the sun because we just do it so commonly. I like to say sun, moon. Jupiter, Venus, Mars, Mercury, etc. Is it a god? The god of sun was Apollo. But it depends on what culture you're in, what group you're in, where you are situated. Native Americans, different groups, right? Egyptians, different ways of, of naming things and, and, and doing it. I mean, you know, Middle East, tremendously important uh, contributions, right? I mean, just go around. China, uh, Incans, my, I'm just, it's, it's a human thing. And people looked up with their naked eyes and wondered for thousands of years, right? Thousands of years. And we're gonna check out <laughs> in one chapter, and then we'll explore as we, as we go along what, what's been found out. But we'll see what you can see and hopefully increase your awareness and your pleasure in looking at this sky and having that knowledge. But you can't get on your friend for not knowing because you can't look up and just know that stuff. I mean, maybe you like watching those the great documentaries and things that are really great, Neil deGrasse Tyson, whoever, this, that, whatever, you know, good stuff, but maybe your friend doesn't. And if you, you just, you don't just know this, but you can look up and see, and a lot of people don't. So. Get folks to look up. Remember those galaxies? I put that book away, didn't I? Oh, just one more time. Galaxies. Can you see them? Could people know about galaxies? Well, they could see three fuzzy objects, but they didn't know what they were. And they too stayed with the dots. They're always in that same place and seen better certain months and whatever. They didn't know there were galaxies. But the only ones that a naked eye can pick out from Earth in the Northern Hemisphere is the Andromeda Galaxy. That huge one is coming towards us. In the Southern Hemisphere, you can see the Large Magellanic Cloud, LMC, and the Small Magellanic Cloud, SMC. Cloud, because it just looks like this fuzzy thing, but it's always next to the same stars, the fixed stars. Turns out, and you could you could never you could never know that there were galaxies until about 100 years ago. It turns out this is a large one, about 2.5 million light years away, and these guys are much closer, but much smaller. Fewer stars. Just look it up. Just Google. Large Magellanic Cloud. How many stars? Small Magellanic. How far? How far away is it? How many light years? Right now you can do that, but they couldn't do that, right? She couldn't do that. She was out there hanging out with her sheep. What happened to my sheep? I have a sheep. All right. All right. Um, 
So that's chapter one. That's what chapter one's about, not this. Five things you can see. What? So let's get into some details. And we're going to start with stars. This will be quick. Touch on this. Tie that to seasons. Tie that to months and moon phases, really. Moons. And, uh, and then we'll get deeper. And as we look up at our with our ancestors, depending on where you are, grow up, where your tribe is, you'll have different stories. And you might connect the dots in different ways. One isn't right. The Greek patterns and mythology does not rule everybody. It didn't rule them. They just made it up, right? Native Americans here, they, they make their own stories, connect the dots. Right? The Pleiades, a little group of stars, seven sisters, Subaru in Japan, I mean unity. Native American, one tribe had it as a canoe. So that's made up. This is, this is what you see. Everybody can agree on this. I draw my picture, you draw your picture over there in Japan or China or wherever you're in Africa and drawing your, because you know, you're looking up, because we're people. That's what we do. And we'd see the same thing. But yeah, uh, your explanation might be different, but you're guessing. Let's see what you could see. All right, let's see what you could see. And yeah, we're gonna get into stars on the next video. Pause and think, what can you see and what can't you see when you look up and see stars?